Well, I'm the uh, I'm the shadow minister for mental health addictions and suicide prevention for the Conservative Party. I was uh, uh, appointed to that position last fall, right after the election. You know, we've spent a lot of time over the years working with vulnerable communities uh, in the developmental disability area in international development and. And I think, uh, you know, our leader at the time thought that that was a, a good transition for me. And it's been fantastic. I think, uh, you know, we see our role as a, as a connector, um, certainly an amplifier of, of uh, some of the messages that need to be uh, sent, questions that need to be asked in Parliament as well as a parliamentarian. We all long for meaningful connection. We need to be heard and understood. You know, every, no matter who you are, um, you know, what other label you might have or, you know, no matter where you live in the country, what age you are, you can struggle with mental health or you can make decisions that have positive impacts for your mental health. And, uh, you know, within, within the autism community, for example, my son is 26, Jaden, he has autism. Uh, he's nonverbal and you take a look at all of the challenges that he has, the skills and abilities that he has, but you imagine what it might be like to not communicate and uh, not be able to verbally communicate how it is you're feeling and how that sometimes connects into anxiety. You know, with autism, you have sometimes a difficulty dealing with the abstract world. As the years go by, we learn more about autism and both the strengths and challenges that come with the label. Still so much remains unknown. We don't understand enough about these things and certainly Canadians who are in the middle of it don't understand always exactly what it is that they're going through or what their loved one's going through. And I think when I think about who's had the most impact on me, it would definitely be, it would definitely be my dad. We didn't then understand OxyContin the way we do now, but I did know my dad. Over time, something was changing. He seemed to be a little fuzzier. It's hard to describe, but he didn't look well over his last several months of his life that instead my father could have known me as a member of parliament and one that he'd be incredibly proud of. It's way past time we took meaningful action to tackle the opioid crisis and other significant issues of mental health in this country. And my, my dad in 2003, on April 29, 2003, passed away from a lethal dose of OxyContin. And uh, having the opportunity to, to be in this position over the last year has really caused me to reflect a lot on that time and what we didn't know at that time and but having these conversations has really given me a, a, a greater understanding of what he would have been experiencing at that time on a positive side we we are having better conversations than we used to have as canadians with one another and there does seem to be more room for people to share without uh without judgment and of course you know during the election campaign a year ago one of the nice things about it is in a world where we seemingly can't agree on anything anymore, all of the parties put together um, significant platform pieces around mental health. I think for us, for me and my team, I think the recognition is just, you know, really it's a, a reinforcement that what we're doing matters, that it is making a difference for people um, that, that need help. Um, and uh, it encourages us, I think, to continue on the path that we're on because uh, what we're doing matters.